but first making movies in Massachusetts with little help from their friends, the taxpayers. Today, a health facility on Townsend Street in Roxbury was getting the Hollywood treatment, being transformed into a hospital for Stronger. That's a movie based on the marathon bombings. This is Boston, and the church does not want them to be found. More than a thousand productions like there, like last year's Oscar-winning Spotlight, have been produced in Massachusetts since the state adopted the film tax credit program 10 years ago. It pays producers 25% of payroll taxes and production costs for projects filmed in the state. Sales taxes waived on any purchases associated with the production. Yesterday, producers and union workers lobbied lawmakers to continue the credit despite opposition from Governor Baker and others who say there are more efficient ways to stimulate the economy. We should note WGBH has benefited from the program for some of the shows we produce right here. Here to discuss if this is a good deal for taxpayers are State Representative Ann Margaret Ferranti, who sports the program. Nice to see you, Representative. And Greg Sullivan, State's former Inspector General, who's currently with the Pioneer Institute in Boston. He opposes the credits, Greg. Yes. Good to see you, too. Give me the Cliff Notes version, Representative. Why is it a good idea? It puts people to work. In my uh, district of Gloucester, we've seen uh, an employment downturn in terms of fishing industry, loss of jobs, and especially with the blue-collar workers. And this has been a godsend to my districts and to other areas where blue-collar workers find work, whether it's building sets, whether it's uh, putting the uh, whole program together, the caterers, the restauranteurs, and not only that, but tourism. Uh, okay, so it's a good thing for Gloucester and places that are having a tough time. Is it a good a deal for all of Massachusetts? Well, what we see right now is two-thirds of the communities in Massachusetts are benefiting right now from the film tax And two-thirds of all the credit goes to out-of-state, doesn't even benefit the state, no. according to the Department of Revenue. Well, the Department of Revenue report is flawed. It has been flawed. State's Department of Revenue report is flawed? It is too narrow. It's too narrow. What it doesn't take into account, let me just tell you, Jim, cities have been uh, had improvements or had payments to them, like Lawrence just recently, $100,000. None of that ever makes it into the report. We have accounting firms where in Quincy, where there's 40 accountants, now have started an industry of processing all types of uh, tax credits. And you credits. say that doesn't make it. That's not interesting. He's chomping report. at the bit. So where's she wrong, Greg Sullivan? Well, first I'm going to come to the defense of the Department of Revenue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if you've seen that report, Jim, but I want to say that that, that is a really amazingly excellent public document by a government agency. But even but, if it's accurate, she, she, it does create jobs. There's no doubt that it creates it, jobs that yeah, wouldn't exist the, the were it not the for problem, the credit, right? The problem with this uh, film tax credit is that uh, you've got states around the country basically funneling huge amounts of money. So far, Massachusetts, more than a half a billion dollars since it passed, uh, fighting each other. California just raised their limit to $300 million a year. What you said in your introduction, it's, that should, people should sit back and say, what did he just say? What, what did, did I say that say? was noteworthy? 25% credit for production and salary. In other words, 25% of the cost of making a film or a TV series, if it's done in Massachusetts, is given as a credit. That's cash. That's not a deduction. I understand, but, but let's see if we can at least agree on this one thing. You do agree that these jobs would not come here. If we weren't giving them the cash, as you say, you think it's too much, she doesn't, they wouldn't be coming here. We wouldn't see virtually any films produced. The, the number of films produced here almost overnight when the credit passed in 2000-something increased exponentially. That is true. You just don't think it's a good deal. Yeah, I don't think it's... Yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, it, it has created jobs, but... The Department of Revenue study that was just released two, uh, two and a half weeks ago said that the subsidy is $109,000 per job. And those jobs are not full-time jobs that last for years. Do you think, let's stay right there. Do you question that, too? That number in the $100,000 yes, range, by the way, let me just say, was a number uh, that came out of DOR recently, the Department of Revenue. It was a comparable number that came out of the Deval Patrick administration's yes. DOR, who supported the credit. So it can't be like the number was cooked. So no, they're wrong through the years? They're wrong through the years because they're looking at a narrow portion of what's happening. So again, for example, if we just look at my district, which I know well, you look at Gloucester and a uh, perfect storm is made. We're hiring some fishermen who are out of work to do their jobs. They're getting a paycheck to support their families. Now they're calling in Woodman's, a local restaurant, and they're saying, we need you to bring in food four times a day because that's what's in the contract. 
Department of Revenue doesn't look at how many times Woodman's was contracted or how many people Woodman's had to hire well, they say that to fulfill they, those contracts. Representative, they say that in the first six years, seven years, 2006 to 12, 411 million in credits and 261 million, obviously a big loss in net economic activity, included in that are all the small yeah. businesses, the subcontractors. It, it, well, let me do yeah. another number that I don't think you can question. It's not Department of Revenue. Uh, uh, I think it was a local CBS station that just did a deal, uh, just did a survey saying, an analysis saying that since the film companies themselves can't even use all the credits that they're getting from the state, they sell them at a My huge gosh. discount, 10 cents on the dollar, to insurance companies and banks. So essentially what you and your colleagues are doing, the legislature is saying, let's have the taxpayers subsidize insurance companies and banks in an attempt to promote the film industry. Isn't that sort of ass backwards? No, it's not. And here's why. Because when people think of films, they think of the Hollywood blockbusters. They're not thinking of the documentary that gets made. Like and here, that, by the way. Like, like say, here, yeah. for example. But even for the smaller person who's doing the documentary, who qualifies for the credit, they get that credit, the value of the credit up front. It's then sold. And when it's sold, they're getting their upfront money where they don't have the big sponsorships that come in to produce those documentaries. Okay, let me hold you there if I can. Greg, you were, before you were in the Inspector General, you were yeah. a state rep, yes. like her in the yes. old days. If you were so right, if the Department of Revenue study is right, yeah. if this insurance company information I've just uh, laid out is right, why did the vast majority of her colleagues side with her? They don't I, want to throw away money. I, I think I know why. What is it? It's the it's the glitter and the and the in the movie and the stars. Bright lights and, and big and stars. The, yes, uh, you, the, the liberal groups like the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities, they put out a tremendous report knocking this tax credit. Mass taxpayers on the other end of the spectrum, they put out a report knocking the tax credit. You'd think that the, that the opposition, to me it's, it's sort of a feeding frenzy. One of the governors called it a heroin drip for, 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 of, of taxpayer money. Uh, to, big point I want to make sure I, yeah. I bring up, two-thirds of the uh, uh, payroll that's paid uh, under this is out of state. And more, Someone I respect a lot just said that. In other words, me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and she quite, but, she, but uh, the representative questions that for a second, you know, representative, it, it seems to me there are choices that people make in government. He used to make when he was a state rep, you make now. The issue is not just is this good spending. The issue is could the same amount of money, the hundreds of millions of dollars, be better spent to create jobs in another way, you would say yes. Yes. You say no, say, a film tax credit I is worth no. a half billion dollars? I, I want to say no, and I also want to respond to Quickly, if you can. What Greg said, you know, it's insulting to say um, captured by the magic of uh, films, and that's what I've had vote state for. reps okay. uh, brag to me about how they met well, Matt they, Damon they can, and other people. I mean, but for, whatever for the most it's worth, part, I don't think that that's it. What it is is, again, Watching blue collar workers lose their jobs, I can't send them to Cambridge and say go work for a technology company. I can't say go down to Lexington and go work for a life science. You could say send them a check that's, for fifty thousand bucks and be half not, as expensive as this. Thing. And they don't want a subsidy; they want to work. Okay, they want to work. On, so I have a guy, Ted Suchecki. Quickly. Okay, who is a carpenter. He's hiring a hundred people to build the set of Patriots Day right now. He could build that anywhere, but he's building it here. Understood. And by building it here, a hundred people get to feed their families. I gotta hold you there, Representative. Good to see you. Thank Greg you. Sullivan, good to see you Thank as well. You. We'll continue this in the days and weeks ahead.